Yeah, we just had a very, very beautiful morning session here. We seem to have those. <laughs> there is so much healing and releasing of limitations here in the group. So if someone has a prompt or a guidance to share something, um, Denise, and, and Denise, is it your daughter with you? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. My name is Barrett. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I decided very last minute to join this morning, so I, I sent through PayPal and I used an old email link and it worked, thankfully. So, um, yeah, just um, I just got the last piece of Helen's conversation as I joined about God's love and human love. Did you have some thoughts that came yeah. to you? Um, so, yeah, I, um, I spent a month in Mexico with Living Miracles in September and um, I had some amazing, like, heart opening, a lot of release of emotions. Um, uh, but while I was there, I was, um, I had met a new person a new man before I left Ireland and we kind of tried to keep this I suppose like a special relationship going you know and um we uh, we met up when I came home and whatever but um yeah look I'm just feeling today this kind of a rejection and loss because he's he decided it wasn't for him um and uh yeah and just kind of really praying you know to help to see this differently because this is the story of my life basically <laughs> um Yeah, like I really prayed the, the the day that he decided to call it quits. I prayed and prayed for clarity just to show me because I didn't know if it was for me or not. And by the end of the day, it was removed <laughs> from my life. So, um, but yeah, my mind is becoming preoccupied with why, you know, I'm trying to go back in which I'm not, I'm not acting out of that, you know, but trying to figure out why, why, but it's, it's a lot of ego stuff, you know, being, feeling not good enough, or did I not, you know, love the person enough. Um. But yeah, I'm just, I just have the willingness to be shown how to see it differently. Like I really want to see it differently. I um, I know the experiences I had in Mexico were real. And you know, a small piece of me when he decided to finish straight away, I kind of felt a small bit of relief and the thought came to my mind, you know, well, Jesus, like, here I am now, you know, there's nothing standing in our way. Thank <laughs> you. 
And with that prayer, you know, everything from the past that doesn't serve will be removed. And this prayer, this other prayer, I don't know but my best interests. To trust it in all circumstances. And when you had that strong prayer that day and the man said, no, I don't want this relationship. That is one of those times when it's obvious that, you know, there are times we think we know our best interest and we try to get something the way we want it because of our past learning, our past experiences. And Jesus will, or the Holy Spirit will actually take away what, what doesn't serve when we giving, when we give that prayer. It's this, the course talks about that we are like little children and we are running with scissors and we will hurt ourselves with the things we think we like. So spirit will remove the scissors. And sometimes the interpretation is that something is taken away that we wanted and it hurts for a little bit. But then to come back to trust that also love is not in form. Like often we can have those wonderful heart opening experiences like falling in love and feeling a connection with someone. And we attach that feeling to the body, to the person. But that's off. <laughs> that doesn't work. Because the experience is so much vaster than, than the situation or the person we're with. And the ego will say you lost the experience when the moment is over. But in spirit, the experience of love is always there. And the forms do change. So the more, the more we're willing to, to not keep this grip of thinking that we know what it should look like. The more we can get ready to be surprised and given the miracle instead. I've had, I've had a few relationships and I've also done a lot of practice with accepting what's given and there was one time I was back in Sweden and I connected in this um, group of people who were they were in like um, equal half webs like addictions and they were doing a Christmas celebration. They invited me to come there. And I walk into the table to, to pick the Christmas food and everything. And this old scruffy man walks in and he said, and he, he just looked at me and, and he said, I love you. He said, right by the table, he said, I want to talk more with you. And, and I asked the Holy Spirit, okay, but what do you have me do? And the spirit said, I hug him. I hugged him. And then we sat down and talked by the table. This man was maybe, I don't know, 65, 70 years old. He didn't smell like he was clean. He looked dirty and scruffy. <laughs> but he said, I've never seen such love that I see in you. And he said, can I visit you? And I asked the spirit, what to say and spirit said yes and I thought okay whatever you know I said to spirit I have those preferences with men like I like them you know my age I like them tall I like them this hair color this eye color 
this size, you know, all those ideas. But, and I said, but I'm willing to, to I'm, I'm willing to take whatever you have for me. <laughs> so the man visited and he brought a cake, you know, because that was came from his heart. And we sat down and ate the cake and then he couldn't wait. And he said, can I kiss you now? He said, <laughs> and I was like, really? I still was in the prayer, okay, whatever is most helpful, what, what would you have me do? And, and and I heard, you don't have to kiss him, you know, and I said, thank you. I was <laughs> a sigh of relief. And and I said to him, okay, but, but only on, on my cheek, um, you can kiss me on my cheek. <laughs> and he was almost like, he kind of grabbed me all around and he tried to kiss me on my lips. So I even had to move my mouth away. And, and, but it was so, so sweet. And then he shared this whole big story of how his dad died when he was a teenager. His mother never let him date girls. Instead, she kind of took him as, as her, um, her husband in a way she she had him help him her with everything and she kind of took him you know as almost like a um, hostage you know all his life and now he was old she was dead and he said I've never been allowed to be with anybody so I was so grateful that spirit could use me to open his heart and Everything. I didn't need to get into a relationship with him, but in that moment, it was the most loving relationship you can imagine because it was guided. Um, yeah, so I'm sharing that because we never know what you know how <laughs> how this journey goes, and but it always brings us to more and more joy. And sometimes when we let go of something, it's just because something greater is coming. Yeah, thanks. I I feel like when I was in contact with him, when I was in Mexico, my heart was just opening up, like, and I fell in love with everybody, you know, and I thought spirit wanted me to look directed at him, but I was probably wrong. You know, I think I was confused because I felt just so much joy like so much love you know and when I came home and we met up it just felt probably deep down I knew myself it wasn't for me but I was trying to make it work you know going after specialness probably and having someone in your life and all this you know so but yeah, thanks. It's just, just want to share the, just the fears and things around it. You know, that's my, that's my, my mind, you know, that's the part that needs healing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I could share so many stories of strange things happening with relationships. <laughs> yeah. Many experiences of heart openings and then the other person just turns and becomes different. And, no, no, I don't want this. I'm feeling like we have shared something so deep and yeah. So it is a letting go of the form over yeah. and over. It's helpful, you know, I feel, I did. I do feel there was something in there that I had to share some kind of love with him for some reason. He was from my past, like from years ago and he came back into my life. So I don't know, I actually don't know what it was for, but I think there was something there and I have to, I suppose, trust it's okay. This is how, this is exactly how it was meant to be, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's it, because spirit doesn't see love on the timeline. 
love is constant and it's vertical and it's yeah it's not like it's not on the timeline so that could be times when you you know we don't know why we meet someone or why you know but it's a holy encounter and there's some healing it can be short encounter it can be longer relationship just to accept and trust that the purpose was fulfilled and it was maximized yeah thanks thank you I'm hoping to come over to see you as well sometime in maybe December, but I'll, I'll email you about that. That sounds good. Yeah. Come to our retreat, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. love and relationship <laughs> anyone else want to talk about this theme or anything else in the mind Nicole, did you unmute yourself? Yeah, um, this week I've just been doing a lot of, using a lot of spirit exercises and it's just really helped me to because I just feel like I've been just attracting a lot of conflict and upsets and yeah and it just feels like it's helped me to see that it's just I'm like I'm the cause it's all happening in my own mind and um yeah there's been some relief there again just to um, be in that place because it feels like then I can do something different I can change it and without that I'm just constantly projecting <laughs> my ego onto everyone and it just comes back at me and it feels like it's amplified and like the the anger or the attack thoughts or the judgments and um yeah so yeah it's just yeah it feels like there's some just some softening going on when I can just really hold it in my own mind um yeah <laughs> but the other thing was I was listening to your speaker about um, the community meeting and this morning and there was just this feeling like I just feel like everything's being taken away from me like I just I have nothing and I I am nothing and this whole journey just feels like it's just one big stripping of everything and so today there's just been like a just a, like a depression and a just a lot of fear about that and like is that is that is that's just where this is whole whole thing's going is just feeling like nothing and <laughs> um, I have nothing I've got nothing I'm just yeah just that kind of feeling so I'm that's what I'm sort of feeling today. 
and asking for help with that to because I know it's related to the form and trying to have something in form I think and, <laughs> and it just feels like it's all getting taken away yeah Yeah, I mean, what comes to mind is this message from Jesus that if you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. Mm. And so the form that you thought you wanted and needed no, it's, you're ready to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> and to let the spirit provide the form is the only way. And we can decide over and over and over and over again how we want things. It will never work. We can mm. keep always spinning for lifetimes, maybe, because they because of their resist, resistance to follow what is best for us. Mm. The spirit is never forcing. There's always an open invitation, and the, that's why the course says, you know, this is a required course, but the time you take it is voluntary. Mm. That is, you know, with healing, it's it's voluntary, but but yeah. Yeah. I just see the hand, you know, until we take his hand, we will feel loss. I think there is loss. Yeah. Because, yeah, you, we had the guidance to invite you here. It was beautiful and provided. And, you know, there is still, the invitation still is here. Mm. There is a deep fear for you in taking the step, symbolized by taking the flight. That is so fearful. There is like a trauma or something in the mind that you need some help with. And the Holy Spirit wants to give you the help. <laughs> Maybe that stripping process and this feeling is like it's getting thinner and thinner. Like what you thought you could have or experience without following that prompt. Mm. Move this one over here so that these people are in view. Uh, stand. Yeah. to go back. <laughs> we need to move be on his bed a little bit and put the chair right where her head is. I think you can do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can move it a little bit towards Karin. Just a little. All right. No. Now you miss Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 
you feel in Nicole then with the Pardon? Yeah, how does it feel as as we as I share this? <laughs> yeah, it just feels like it, I've got too much trauma to get through and I just can't do it. <laughs> And I feel like it would be really helpful and I want to do it and I just can't. Mm -hmm. You would literally need someone to hold you, to, to carry you here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's pray for that to happen. Okay. Let's join in that prayer. <laughs> Yeah. We need to become children in full reliance. Almost like being in the baby carriage. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that in the world, like I just don't have any I don't know. It's just too scary for me. <laughs> To be in the world. Yeah. Yeah, you're not made for this world. Yeah, and I just can't function by myself. And I feel like I've got to do it, do it by myself. And I just, it's just like I'll, I'll never be able to do it and I won't get the help I need to, to do it. <laughs> And why would spirit be so cruel to, like, have something that's really helpful and that I can't do? It just feels... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like it's too big a step for me to do. <laughs> no, he wouldn't have something that is too difficult for you to do. Why would spirit have something that is too difficult for you to do? Yeah, he wouldn't. <laughs> Where you anticipated grief, you will find a happy lightheartedness instead. Where you yeah. anticipate away from you, something too scary for you to do, you will be happily surprised and find a miracle instead. A miracle of love and freedom and joy. True freedom, yeah. not the body. Freedom of the body is choosing location. Yeah. <laughs> Freedom of the body. Yeah. Sometimes like we, we think we're asked to do what we fear the most. Yeah. only to release that fear to see that it wasn't fearful at all see that we're gifted with beautiful beautiful instead <laughs> healing the trauma and doing the belief there ever was a trauma. <laughs> and now I worry, like with the vaccines, I, I just, I've got a whole thing about that too. <laughs> I would not want to do that. <laughs> People here have the vaccine. You did take the vaccine. Yeah, Matthew's here. He, he took the vaccine. He looks perfectly healthy and happy and he's full function here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Holy Spirit uses form and whatever makes it easy. Yeah. <laughs> right. The Holy Spirit undoes all beliefs about the form, about what is 
healthy and unhealthy and risky or not risky in form. Like, again, yeah. like, we cannot decide upon the form. We look yeah, because I've bought into this belief and that it's toxic and dangerous. <laughs> No. <laughs> there is nothing in form that can harm you or hurt yeah. you. We have another friend, maybe you heard it in another meeting. She said she saw she, Jesus told her to take the vaccine and she saw Jesus holding the syringe. syringe. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> And then she could travel freely. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how Jesus and God's laws go beyond all worldly laws. In this world, yeah, we the chemicals, the there are so many explanations to what it does to the chemicals in the body and the, what's gonna happen in the future. But all of that is wiped out when you say yes to the Holy Spirit's purpose. Yep. I'd take it. I'd take it if, I, if Jesus asked me to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're so beautiful, Nicole, and I know you're brave. <laughs> Spirit asks of you. <laughs> it's for your healing, it's for you. Yeah. Not for somebody else. And how yeah. come? What? what do you want to say? Oh, uh, it's just because I imagine myself sitting there in, in the session and and it would just feel like, you know, being there. And then it, it felt to me like now everything's being taken away from me, my home, my, I don't know. It's a lot about home and location and friends and and then I would have absolutely nothing and I would just freak out. I would just wouldn't be able to handle it. That's what the fear is. Well, God wants to teach you that your, your home is in God. And there are stepping stones on that journey. The temporary homes in the world. <laughs> you know, like Jesus says in the course, the homes you build have never sheltered you. The home yeah. you're in. Supporting you. And you have to move around. Trying to find a place. But... Yeah. Like it's some kind of still identity. Hanging on to an identity. So that's what the fear is, I guess, just totally letting go of any identity. Yeah. It just feels like I'll just freak out. I'll just be in complete fear and it won't be helpful or something like that. Like, you use houses here in Spain too. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good stripping happening here. Very good. Yeah. 
yeah if i could just go through it just do it and go through it <laughs> i can see so many it's mine it's me <laughs> yeah if you put it on speaker view, everyone, you can probably see Sylvan. You feel I it. just feel, Gallery Nicola, view. I just feel you in my heart. It's just like, it's like, um, you're just telling everything I've been going through for so long time. I just, I just felt Come it's over so here. strong. Yeah. I just felt so strong that everything you're telling now is it's just like like I was talking. It was this yeah. I suddenly realized that uh, yeah, I had a longing to be here for a long time and two years, right? And two and a half and a half years. <laughs> And, and there were so many things I couldn't, it was like, no, I just can't, I just can't, I just can't. And then, yeah, the last, I don't know, three, four months, just everything had been stripped away. And yeah, even Peter was sent me to help me. I suddenly realized that... Um, Marriage. Yeah, even before... <laughs> There's this strong feeling that he was supposed to come to Denmark and so many things was in the way. But he ended up coming this summer and that's, yeah, I, I needed some help and yeah. I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then suddenly I was like, wow, this is just for me to get going for this thing that just seems like it's really holding on. Yeah, it's so much fear about letting go. So I, I just really felt you in my heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come behind and just show your face to the new, <laughs> new participants there too. It's been beautiful. For, for, um, we worked we worked hard to <laughs> help remove the obstacles. There was one I didn't want any help. <laughs> no, and one day they, they called me and they said this is not gonna work. We cannot bring Peter to Denmark, they said, because <laughs> The pandemic. Yeah. There are too many rules. We and Peter said, I, I can't go. We can't do this. Yeah. And so then we had a call, you know. And I mean, you guys have been part of it. You have been here in the group because it's been shared every time. Yeah. <laughs> and there wasn't, yeah. yeah you wanna... Just go on. <laughs> trying to <laughs> 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 You spoke to us. Yeah. You spoke to us about not, you know, just let go of the worldly rules. And that was so inspiring. I knew then that we were coming. You know, and both Solva and I both had some attachment to you know doing the right thing and all that sort of stuff you know usual thing that we all go through mm. um but yeah so <laughs> say, but um yeah but welcome but a big welcome yeah 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 and of course it entails undoing of the fears and the blocks and the limitations that is what spiritual journey is about. We're deceived when we think it's about moving about in, in the world of form. It's a moving about in the ideas, in the, through the fears. And there is no way around them, but through them. There is no way around the fears. Yeah. Yeah, you can 
try, you can do it for as long, but you're staying rearranging the deck chairs in Titanic while it's going down. And you will, you know, you will keep being in that state until you decide to go through them. And it's only before you go. My experience is it's only the fear is only before you take the step. It is so terrifying, it feels like you're gonna jump off the cliff and die, but yeah. Yeah. but one <laughs> step you're given wings. It's just like this beautiful poem about birds. The they they make three circles in the sky. How do they learn? They fall and falling, they are given wings. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I always feel yeah. so touched by you, Nicole. Oh, thank you. So, so sincere and authentic. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah. Could I just share something as well for Nicole? Just, um, I had huge fear. Like I went to Spain to Mallorca with Living Miracles in June, and I was terrified. You know, um, never done a lot of travel on my own. The COVID, my flights kept getting cancelled. I thought it was a sign, but my my brother here, my fam my blood brother. He knows nothing about the course, but he was a clear message to me. Like he kept saying, no, go from a different airport, I'll pay for your flights. Like he wanted me to go. And then when I got there, it was beautiful. It's just, and the same again with Mexico, I was terrified. You know, I just such a long trip and, but it's the, it's just the fear of whatever the unknown for me it was anyway. And. I was terrified, yeah. I have to say, absolutely, really, really, really scared. But the benefits of being around like-minded people, the power of that, like, it's just so beautiful and it was so worth it. Like, I just thank God and Jesus that they got me there safe, like <laughs> nothing bad happened, you know, so. I just uh, wanted to share that as well, if that helps. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I had that experience when I came, first came up to where I'm living now, I was really terrified. And, and but once I got there, I knew I was meant to be there. And so it just, the fear subsided and yeah, so. It would probably be the same. Yeah. <laughs> Receive a happy lightheartedness, a surprise. Yeah. Pain that you anticipated. Yeah. Yeah, and we are we are releasing the world. We are leaving the world. We are living in a light world. In a, we are entering the real world in the happy dream and the world is very, becomes very uh, loose. It's not as solid, it's not, the form isn't sustaining us, it is not, it's not really even there, it's not, it's not supporting us, we cannot find the safety there. Yeah. Getting very, very loose, very... <laughs> Thank you. Beings of spirit. Yeah, it's all, it's all we can rely on, and it's all there is, and it would be great joy to fully experience that, you know? Yeah. There's no safety in form at all and there's so much fear in taking a step there's so much fear of change everybody experiences it because it's a 
reminder of the first change, which is the separation. Yeah? Mm. Mind believes in separation. It is so scary. You feel cut off and you feel alone and you see images of revenge, anger, attack, you know, and, and, and that change from serene peace and the love of God to that feeling of separation is so horrific that any change in form will remind of that initial change. But yeah. that's illusory because the spirit needs to use changes to understand. Yeah. Right. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's always helpful. We read a little bit today from the development of trust. It just does say that changes are always helpful. Takes, yeah, this is what it, says. it takes great learning to understand that all things, events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful. It's only to the extent to which they are helpful that any degree of reality should be accorded them in this world of illusion. The word value can apply to nothing else. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we can read the development of trust together. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asked to read this. Yeah, do, you, do you want to sit in the corner? Okay. <laughs> do you need help? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, the development of trust. First, you must go through what might be called a period of undoing. This need not be painful, but it is usually so experienced. It seems as if things are being taken away. Exactly what you're saying, Nicole. Everything is stripped away. It's rarely understood initially that their lack of value is merely being recognized. Yeah, so we talked about here, lack of values being recognized. But how can lack of value be perceived unless the perceiver is in a position where he must see things in a different light? You can't see lack of value until you see things in a different light, in the light of the spirit. He's not yet at a point at which he can make the shift entirely internally. So the plan will sometimes call for changes in what seem to be external circumstances. These changes are always helpful. When the teacher of God has learned that much, he goes on to the second stage. This is it. <laughs> So the changes are always helpful. Next, the teacher of God must go through a period of sorting out. This is always somewhat difficult because having learned that the changes in his life are always helpful, he must now decide all things on the basis of whether they increase the helpfulness or hamper it. He will find that many, if not most, of the things he valued before will merely hinder his ability to transfer what he has learned to new situations as they arise, the past learning will interfere with many, or if not most, of the things 
he valued before will merely hinder his ability to transfer what he has learned to new situations as they arise, saying, forget the past learning. He cannot, he cannot teach you now. He cannot say to you what to do or what it means or how it feels even. He's just saying, take my hand, let's go do those little things that you need to go through. Because he's valued what is really valueless, he will not generalize the lesson for fear of loss and sacrifice. It takes great learning to understand that all things, events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful. It's only to the extent to which they are helpful that any degree of reality should be accorded them in this world of illusion. The word value can apply to nothing else. The third stage through which the teacher or student of God must go can be called a period of relinquishment. If this is interpreted as giving up the desirable, it will engender enormous conflict. So a safe home in Australia, if that is interpreted as giving up the desirable, there will be no conflict. That's what you, exactly what you're expressing. Few teachers of God escape this distress entirely. Very few, I would say, escape this distress entirely. There is, however, no point in sorting out the valuable from the valueless unless the next obvious step is taken. Therefore, the period of overlap is apt to be one in which the teacher of God feels called upon to sacrifice his own best interests on behalf of truth. He has not realized as yet how wholly impossible such a demand would be. He can learn this only as he actually does give up the valueless. Like we have a woman here who feels like her grandchild is very valuable to her and she feels called upon to give over that love, and that relationship to the Holy Spirit on behalf of truth. And that's exactly what he's describing here. You feel called upon to sacrifice your own best interest, you know, a certain place or a certain relationship on behalf of truth. And you haven't realized that it's impossible to give up anything. And you can only learn it by giving up the valueless, by giving up the form that you thought was it. Through this, he learns that where he anticipated grief, he finds a happy lightheartedness instead. Where he thought, where she thought something was asked of her, she finds a gift bestowed on her. Now comes the period of settling down. This is a quiet time in which the teacher of God rests a while in reasonable peace. So this is, you know, after taking that step, there will be a time of settling down and resting in reasonable peace. Now he consolidates his learning. Now he begins to see the transfer value of what he has learned. His potential is literally staggering. And you're now at the point in your progress at which you see in it your whole way out. Give up what you do not want and keep what you do. How simple is the obvious and how easy to do. The teacher of God needs this period of respite. He's not yet come as far as he thinks. Yet when he's ready to go on, he goes with mighty companions beside him. Now he rests a while and gathers them before going on. He will not go on from here alone. <sighs> yes, it's very powerful. We don't need to read further because we need to take those steps first. Then there are more steps and deeper steps and the journey continues, but but it can only be so very expensive from here. 
Nicole, you don't know how loved you are. <laughs> everyone, everyone, you don't know how loved you are. Including me. Yeah, the beautiful relationship you have with all your brothers is a part of you because it is a part of God himself. This is it. This is why I don't have special relationships. Okay. I love, I love all relationships. I love everyone. I cannot have special relationships. They are on the altar. I always put them on the altar. And the beloved companion comes and joins me on the journey. Thank you. But he's also on the altar. That's the only place for any form. And the blessing of it is beautiful. It's healing all around. And I did go through all my fears. And if more come, I go through them too. But I had lots of, I had terror. I had terror of being alone. I had terror of many different things. But it wasn't too terrifying to give it up, <laughs> to give up those fears and to, to say yes. That, that was easy compared to holding on to it. Oh my God, how alone I've felt in the past. There was also a stage to go through and face, but then there was a stage to come together. Like they're doing there in Switzerland with Helen. It's beautiful. And we're doing it here. We're nine of, it, of us here and the house is too small. We're asking the Holy Spirit, Give us a bigger house, please. <laughs> Show us how to be here so that we can have the room for everyone. We want everyone to, to be comfortable. Our kitchen is too small, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> And then Michelle comes and rents an apartment and says, use this. <laughs> there is three more rooms, room for five more people. And it's just five minutes drive away. It's We're all holding hands in this. There is space for everyone and for every healing that needs to occur. Yes. <laughs> We are. <laughs> no matter what calling is, no matter where we're called to go, we hold hands in this purpose. And we even hold invisible hands. Yeah. There is nothing to fear. We are not moving about in a scary, fearful world. We're just moving through the fears inside. The world isn't fearful, Nicole. There is nothing there. You sit on that plane and you will just, you will just feel the expansion and you will just feel the connection and the trust. You will be served food and whatever and, you know, there will be comfort and there will be comfort arriving. We'll hug you, we'll sit with you, we'll listen to you, be careful for you. There is literally nothing to fear in the world. There is a deep terror in the mind. And the saying no to the, the means, saying no to the 
yeah, to the means given it's, it's because there is still fear of the goal, fear of the outcome, fear of the letting go. But my experience is that only blessings have come every time I've let go. I can't tell you how huge the blessing was when I let go of marriage, money, ministry, marriage, money, ministry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Seeming mighty companions in form, mighty companions in form, you know, to have them in mind only. <laughs> The blessing I felt, the freedom I felt, the support I felt from the Holy Spirit was massive. And the guidance was so clear. Go there now, ring that one now. And if I would say, no, I don't feel like it, if I wouldn't obey it, it would be struggle. But I've learned I need to obey it immediately to not extend the suffering in the world. <laughs> to not... So I have learned to say yes. To be so humble, like extremely humble, extreme humbleness is strength. And it, it took me around and it, to places and people and amazing, amazing things started to happen. And I've never felt as safe as when I had nothing. I still have nothing. I mean, I'm seemingly here, but not really. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> there is no need to be anywhere you know that's that's what we're coming to it's to rest in god Thank you for, for sharing and for opening up here. All those beautiful quotes from Jesus coming to mind. Like we go together, him and I. We go together, you and I. We walk together. All those messages of joining. Safety was the theme here. We, we have talked about that here in the group. And there was someone in the group who wanted to see that it was safe to trust. Our own decision made and went out. Maybe to learn to trust and find safety find the safety and trusting spirit. Yeah, it's precious. Helen, did you wanna speak? Yeah, go for it. Hi, Helen. <laughs> Hi. Oh, um, I can feel my heart, and I'm so. I I feel so much love, and uh, 
Yeah, I'm very happy to be with all of you. I'm very happy that you read the, the passage about trust in the course, because it's exactly what came to mind. When I said now the mighty confinements are coming, that's exactly the passage that I saw. And I was like, that's exactly, this is so exactly the description. Yeah. And um, Spirits wants me to share uh, a story if I can. Yes. But, um, and uh, I see lately Spirit just wants me to just know the next steps. So I, I know clear why I'm saying this, but, but I really hear <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to do. So learning how to be totally in the unknown. <laughs> so um, a little step in front of you. Yeah, exactly. So, being in the hands, it's like, oh, like a baby. Like I don't know why I say that. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> and I know clue. But it feels good. I felt the joy and yeah. So I I yeah. <laughs> That's it. And uh, what came to mind is um, that I share how I met Greg. It's also a good introduction for a game into the group. And, um, well, Jenny, you know, I, I, I called you once and I was like, I don't know why, but I feel um, like back then I said tempted. To go to yoga. Back then I said, I feel tempted to go to a yoga retreat. With, yeah. with a lot of, of people. And I thought, God, yoga, you know, uh, the thing is the body, I'm out of there, I do the course. But I felt so strongly in my heart, like, like a child, you know, the thing like, I forget about the course, I forget, I forget the course, I forget the music, I, I just go for the, for the yoga retreat. And it was one week. But then I was, oh, no, you know, maybe, and I had the laziness coming up. Yeah. And then on a Sunday, it became very intense in me, very intense. And I was, okay, good, I'm gonna go tomorrow. And then I had a huge headache and I said, I have to lay down. So I lay down. And then when I lay down and I thought, okay, now it's my moment, I hear, pack your stuff, you go now, we're gonna get someone, we need to get someone. And you know, my another voice said, yeah, of course, Helen, you're gonna get someone. Yeah, of course, you know, it sounded like you and James go on a mission or something. <laughs> But it uh, was so intense that I went to Vita and I said, I need to get like in an hour, we, I need to go. I, I don't ask me what I know, how, I don't know, but I couldn't tell him, we, I'm going to go get some. But then he, he automatically said, okay, we're going to go. So he drove me, he left all this stuff, he drove me. And then I arrived at this yoga retreat. And I felt like, you know, I felt out of place, I felt how am I doing this and so, but I, you know, I, I said, okay, good. And then everyone started and they really seeing themselves. Yeah, I do yoga, da, 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 da. and there is one, Craigie, said, yeah, because the Holy Spirit, and then I hear, that's it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's real. I'm really, I, I'm really, it's really real life. And, and then I was like, okay, how do I do it? How am I, am I going to answer? I'm like, no, no wait, 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 you just follow, you don't, don't do anything. Okay. <laughs> and then the next day, the next thing I know, a couple of days later, I'm with him on the table and the spirit starts and telling me like, look, you need to come. We're going to, you can't do the course in America alone. Uh, we're going to do that together. I just a group that started a few days ago. And saying like the whole universe is behind us, that behind you, and you know we can feel the power of God, like, yeah. And <laughs> that's why I guess you know if you if someone needs to be sent, like someone will appear. And I'm very blessed that I get the chance to be on the all other way. So the trust is everything, and someone will show up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe you want to share also, Gregory. Yes, yes, from my side. Um, I'll try to condense this as, as good as possible. So I, I'll start like this. For, for the 
majority of my life, I had not been a consciously spiritual person. And about a year ago, I had a huge enlightenment and it came seemingly out of nowhere. I, I wasn't consciously looking for it, but it came to me. And at the time I, I started noticing that I had abilities, if you wanna put it that way, that were unaware, that, that were not in my awareness before. Mm -hmm. And um, I was I was invited. I was thrown into the spiritual community, and I was invited by by someone very near and dear to my heart to to take part in a retreat that that was a yoga retreat that Cohen was was talking about um, as a healer. And um, um, I want to say that the course. Before I got into what I would say called spirituality, I, I knew that the course was for me. I, I, I told myself, if I'm getting into this, my eyes are set on God and, and the course is the truth. And I don't want to get into shamanism and any other things that were presented to me because I knew this was the truth. Yeah. And I was very insecure because this was very new to me. And I was very insecure of, um, can I share this with people? Are people going to think I'm nuts if I share what I, what I know is true? Okay. Okay. So, so at this retreat, um, during the introduction, everyone, you know, introduced themselves and, and uh, said what they were doing. And I, I used the words God and, and Holy Spirit when, when I introduced myself to, to explain what I, what I do kind of. And, I remember feeling very insecure because many people in the spiritual community they they don't they don't want to use the words God they, they don't like they they say source consciousness and all and, and they don't they don't like to use the terms God and, and the Holy Spirit. Anyways, so when I when I introduced myself and used these words, I guess Glenn knew that I was the person she was looking for. And um, two days later. <laughs> I was having lunch and, and she was sitting across from me. And, and up until that point, I hadn't really noticed her because we were about, I, I guess, 80 or hundred people. And, and I hadn't really, she was just not, hadn't noticed her. And suddenly she said, you're the guy who's, who's doing the course. And the first instant I remember I was like eating and I looked up at her and I was like, the first second, I was like very excited thinking, wow, yeah, yeah, that's me. But then the second later, I knew, oh my God, how does she, there's no, like, how does she know this? And I, I got kind of afraid, like, like, I was like, yeah, how do you know that? And she looks at me with her eyes and she's like, five days before I came here, the Holy Spirit told me that a healer is going to be here and and I shouldn't be afraid to to talk to him and invite him to do the course with us and my whole like I'm getting goosebumps right now and I had goosebumps then and tears came down my eyes because I felt so alone going this path I thought oh my god all my friends everyone who I've ever known are going to think I'm crazy and no one's going to ever understand me because I know this is the truth. So I felt incredibly blessed that spirit was putting me, yeah, you know, yeah it's just like the people yeah. that I've gone with, I guess, to, to help me yeah. and further my path. And so I'm, yeah. I'm beyond grateful. I can't even put it into words. My, my life has changed. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there are no words to describe how blessed I feel yeah. and blessed to be here with all of you. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very precious. That is so beautiful. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, the design is just impeccable. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's the mind. And the undoing, like if there was any scrap in the mind, even for you, Helen, to have a desire for another path or yoga or like to undo it in this way, send you to a yoga retreat and tell you to 
to bring to to get someone that you're supposed to join with in this purpose. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Like you, I was sent to a yoga retreat two year two summers ago. And it was similar. It was just a whole other purpose than than I thought. And uh, you know the thing is, to, yesterday um, an Ayurvedic teacher called me and he said, "Hello, I'm doing an, a year cooking class." And I was like, the same thing. I was like, "Okay, now I do the course. I know the you know the food and the yoga and the and the Ayurveda. I'm done with it." But then I feel joy. Then I'm like, I don't understand any, anything more. Then I in the mind that I don't want to be bound one year, I don't want to do the cooking, but I feel the joy, but I can't explain. I hate cooking, you know, I don't like cooking, on top of it. <laughs> but I said, yes, as I don't want to understand, but it feels joyous, so let's get a cooking class, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I, I don't have, I, I can't even say that's the course, not the course. I just have to go through the feeling. And the feeling is like, my heart is, is very, very happy. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. No. No. It okay, good. Often doesn't. Yeah. So that's guidance. So that's good because I still have the thing like, it really doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I thought I was over. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thanks yeah. for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Often or guidance, yeah, doesn't often make sense to the rational mind. Okay. Yeah. It's funny you start talking about cooking and food because I had this smell in my nose. Okay, I'm gonna eat fish today. So I might go and cook. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> it starts to become lunchtime soon. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to find a rational to say, oh, one day in a the community, then people will be happy that I know that, you know, but I know it, it's just joy, but, and I don't know if I'm, and also, you know, for me to, I also have this sense that if I commit to something, then it's until the end, but Spirit's going to tell me, no, you just said yes to a course, and, you know, you do the first course, and you're there, and you don't know. So, yeah, it's also an ongoing for me to, you know, like promise something to someone. Mm. You know what I want to say? It's, it's, it's human promise and God's promise and just, you know, to see, the, feel the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You commit to something, if you, if you, like the wedding, like the marriage, it's said, when you say yes, to whom you say yes and to what you really say yes. Yeah. It's kind of the confusing thing that now I'm getting out of it because I yeah. sit and I've been very like compliant to contracts, to things that, yeah. You, you say yes to guidance. You marry the Christ and you say yes to guidance and the form will follow accordingly. The form will be the best for that moment, but it's not, never to a person. And the commitment in, in this world is so serious, you know, and in America even it's like a crime if you if you shit yeah even it's like a court case in America but yeah it's, it's never to the form that we can commit we can only commit to purpose yeah and that can be temporary in the form of the undoing of the past way. That's for sure. And I can it now came to mind it was a healing back then in Mallorca. I did not understand why you told me the sentence you said. Because on, for the group, when I was in Mallorca, I called Jenny and I say, I don't feel it. Something is off. It's, and I was really lost. And then I heard call Jenny. Then I called Jenny and Jenny told me, your healing is to me. And I, I thought I'm being the good girl for God and doing the right thing by no matter what I'm saying. And when you said that, I went like, and yeah, to know when to really leave and to have the allowance to 
just follow whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that theme has been up here too. The idea that there is a form or a place that is more sacred and holy and since it is so good, you should stay. And then there is confusion and judgment instead of just following blindly, I would say. It is actually a blind following because you don't understand why, you know, it is to just trust and stick to it. Yeah. And, and for me, it's even to say, stay really with the feeling because at some point I could hear spirit and now spirit is kind of like sometimes not, not answering anymore and, and tell me like just stay with the feeling and be guided only by the feeling and not even anymore more by with the voice more with the, yeah, the mm -hmm. feeling yeah so it's yeah I reach on the thank you yeah <laughs> thank you too <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. And it gives me uh, everything. Like I can just like emphasize everything that you told me that was not my experience. But just someone, you know, I, I trusted you. It was not my experience. I'm very so happy that I did that. That you told me stuff that was beyond what I could. But I, I love what you said. And I want to be spiritual. So. <laughs> Thank you for laughing with me. <laughs> yeah, now I can. Back then I couldn't. And thank you, Barrett, as well. Yeah. Yeah. For laughing when I was not. <laughs> it, was, it was the most helpful thing. Very good. Well, we can go and make some fish and say good night to Nicole for now and <laughs> good morning to Michelle and Denise. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. On the poly. Poppy or Polly? Poppy. Poppy, yeah. Poppy or Poppy. <laughs> good to see you, Helen. Uh, it's, good. it's so good to see you. So good. So good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm so happy you're there. I'm so happy you're there and, and that you're both there. Yeah. Oh. I feel like you made it for all of us there. That's good. Uh, you made it for all of us. Thank you. Yeah. We are doing another retreat in December, 9th to 12th. So it would be great to see everybody there in Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs>